Hello everyone, this is Tamin from MOFO presenting our survey paper on behalf of the co-authors. When I joined MOFO in 2017, Professor Kuni was the Chief Technology Advisor, but he had been there since MOFO started in 2004. Like he was an early investor, an advisor, then he was there when the company went public and he's been a mentor to most of us at MOFO. So he's very humble, you could catch him for lunch. He liked sushi so we'd go out and eat sushi with him. He'll discuss uh, a variety of topics like how to apply uh, his favorite topic, topology, to social media or sometimes uh, something totally unrelated to technology. His desk was a wonderful place to see. Like He had a long bow by the side of it when he was so old. He was practicing that. You could always see whatever new gadgets that come out to the market on his desk. It was a mountain of hardware. He was like a little boy when it comes to playing with technology. He was very enthusiastic. Many of you know that he wrote a lot of books, but he also read a lot of books. We still have a lot of his books on Morpho's bookshelves. He didn't come often in the last year uh, in his life, but whenever he came to the office, he had smiles and we had smiles. We liked his company. We, we miss him. I have a favor to ask you. This is the first time I'm presenting a survey paper. So um, I don't know how exactly I should do this, but I think what I can do is present the problem, then uh, give you an outline of the paper and the concluding remarks. Please bear with me if uh, that doesn't meet your expectations. Thanks. This survey covers the intersection of two research and development areas that have a lot of change and a lot of work. The first mobile device with a camera was a mobile phone. Now we have cameras on a variety of mobile devices including smartphones and game consoles. Because of the small size of mobile devices, there's a difference between mobile cameras and the other cameras. These uh, key differences are smaller size and less ability to control aperture and other parameters and also the small sensor size. So because of the low quality lenses and sensors, we have lower quality photos from mobile cameras. But then mobile devices have more processing power. So we could use that power to process images, to fix problems like remove noise. Then sometimes you want to make things look better, like for faces you want to remove uh, skin wrinkles and things like those. And sometimes you want to make photos more professional by adding effects. So all these can be done using the extra processing power on mobile devices. Right, so you can process images on the mobile device and make them better. But there are a few things you have to remember. The processing power is used for another primary purpose like communication. So you have to keep that in mind. You can't take everything in the mobile device for image processing. The battery life is important. You can't drain the battery. And mobile cameras have high resolution, so you have a lot of processing to do. But the biggest constraint we have is high expectations from the user. The users don't like uh, images with artifacts, so the result still has to be at a good quality. Let's see what kind of support a mobile device provides for image processing. When it comes to processing power, a mobile device has a CPU with multiple cores, so we can always decide how many cores are used for image processing tasks while leaving the others for the primary function of the mobile device. Then there's a GPU which handles the graphics functions and if there are resources remaining in the GPU, those can be used for image processing because GPUs support parallel processing which is highly desirable for image processing. Then 
Some of the devices have digital signal processors. They can be used for conventional image processing. Then some others have support for deep learning in France. So that too can be used if you use deep learning for image processing. Most devices have multiple cameras. And then there are image-like data from other sensors like infrared or TOF. So all these can be used as supplementary data for improving your images. We also have software libraries that support image processing tasks, especially neural inference libraries like Apple's Core ML or TensorFlow Lite will support uh, faster programming for image processing. In image processing, you take an image as input and then produce a different image which hopefully has better quality than the original. Now here's a well-known recipe in mobile image processing. When a user takes a single photo, the mobile device usually takes multiple photos. Sometimes the number can be as large as 9. So this is permitted because of the higher shutter speeds on mobile devices when compared to uh, mechanical shutter cameras. Once you have a number of photos with some parameter varying, you can use them in a multi-frame image processing task to acquire the desired result. In the paper, you can see implementation details of uh, techniques like noise reduction, motion blur reduction, high dynamic range imaging, and also super resolution. This is an example for high dynamic range imaging on a mobile phone. You can see that in the three photos on the left, different portions of the image appear with correct exposure. These are combined to form the image on the right, which is the final high dynamic range image. In theory, you can just apply image processing techniques to every frame of a video and call that video processing. But this doesn't work because of a few reasons. Um, users are extremely sensitive to uh, a temporal discontinuity, so you have to ensure continuity while processing a video and therefore you have to look at the previous or next frame. And you have to prevent artifacts. And there are other reasons like limited processing time, you have to process uh, maybe 30 frames per second. You have to make sure that the processing technique does not take too much power because the phone can heat up and affect every other thing uh, that goes in the phone. So video processing is a different topic when it comes to mobile devices. Common applications for video processing on mobile devices are video stabilization, noise reduction, and distortion correction. In this slide, you can see the result of noise reduction in a single frame of video. On the left, you see the original frame, and on the right, you can see the result of noise reduction. The result is not perfect because it was taken at night, but you can achieve this kind of performance quite fast. Multiple cameras were first added to smartphones because it's not possible to change lenses. So you can have different cameras with wide lenses, tele lenses or ultra wide lenses and use the camera according to the photo that you are going to take. But the additional benefit of having multiple cameras is that you can estimate the relative depth in the scene and this information can be used to apply various effects to the photos. The photo on the left was taken with a smartphone. With small lenses you cannot have realistic bokeh effects in the background. But by estimating depth and applying the bokeh effect artificially only to the background region, you can get the photo on the right. In image analysis, the result of analysis is not an image, but some information regarding the content of the image. 
these are some examples for image analysis tasks. Um, the list is growing because uh, this is a huge uh, growing research area. Uh, with the advances of deep learning, more and more people are trying to solve more problems uh, of digital image analysis. This is an example of image segmentation. In image segmentation, you partition an image to non-overlapping regions based on the content. So, what is this useful for? For example, the cat is a furry animal, so you can filter that part of the image without uh, destroying the texture in the furry area, while you can suppress the background uh, to have a different effect. Let's have a quick look at recent trends. Manufacturers are trying to incorporate better sensors into their devices. Semantic filtering is also a growing topic. In semantic filtering, we try to process an image uh, by regions according to what is shown in that region. Then there are also trends uh, resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, People suddenly started working from home, so uh, it suddenly became necessary to have techniques like background removal or correcting the gaze uh, in laptops or tablets. So uh, we suddenly started uh, getting contacted uh, about these features. So I presented our somewhat broad survey of image processing on mobile devices. So I basically highlighted what the challenges are and also outlined how we approach them. So you might have noticed that uh, it's not exactly cutting edge technology but mostly optimizing what is available to match the constraints in mobile devices. It needs a lot of know-how and also it has some unpublished work when we get to a solution that works on a mobile device. I hope the survey encourages you to read more about this and helps you if you someday are going to solve problems that involve mobile devices and image processing. Thank you very much.